our Father's Arms, nestled in the beautiful foothills of Appalachia in the southeastern United States and northeast Alabama. Our Father's Arms is a place of healing and deliverance. Each day, we turn our hearts toward God's Word. There's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, one for each day of the month. The proverb for the day provides a springboard and commentary to the rest of Scripture. We invite you to join us as we relax, open our Bibles, and trust Him to speak to our hearts. Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple or naive, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come eat of my bread. Drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Now here's a, a very interesting note. Why is he referring to wisdom and the feminine gender? This is awesome when you see it. Is he saying God's a woman? Well, that'd get you thrown off a cliff, on it? Our father is God, but our mother is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is for, referred to more in the feminine gender throughout Scripture than the masculine gender. And it begins in Genesis 1 when the Spirit was brooding over the face of the deep, about to give birth to creation. You remember the cry of Jesus when he wept over Jerusalem and he said, How many times I would have taken you under my wing like a mother hen, but you wouldn't let me? Now, there's a, a, a little a secret that's unfolded uh, in uh, 1 John. I think it's 3, 1. He says, Oh, what manner of love the Father has shown unto us that we could be called children of God. Family. Why has He instituted the family? In order to give us revelation of His heart and His nature. We don't serve like uh, some of our Muslim friends think that uh, Christians worship three gods, the Father, the Son, and Mother Mary. You know, they've been taught that lie about us. We've been taught a lot of lies about them. But we don't serve three God. There's one God who has chosen to reveal himself to man in three unique ways. My wife is a school teacher, and she's a mother, and she's a wife. She's not three people. One God revealing himself to us in three ways, and that way is family. And this is why he has instituted the family. The dad is to be a picture of, symbolic of, God the Father. The mother is to be a picture of God the Mother. The child is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. The church is a picture of the bride who becomes intimate with the husband. You remember when we saw the uh, day before yesterday in the, uh, the parable of the, uh, the foolish virgins? It said, the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. Have oil in your lamp. Be ready any moment. The bridegroom is coming. And over in Revelation, we read about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the table that's prepared, and for those who overcome, will eat with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's why you don't get frustrated over adversity, because you can't learn to overcome if there's not something to overcome. That's the purpose of adversity, is to learn to overcome it, not let it overcome you. And we see in Scripture the how-to in doing that. All right, now, when you receive the spirit of adoption, this is Romans 8, we have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. God Almighty wants to adopt you into His family. Now, here is the fear of God that keeps you from evil. Father is the one with justice in His eyes. The one who draws the line, no compromise. Father is the one whose wrath we cannot endure. He sees all things and his judgment is sure. Mother is the one 
with compassion in her eyes. She holds her young, and together they cry. Mother is the one who lights our path, nurtures and protects from Father's wrath. There's mercy. Everybody needs a father and a mother. Everybody needs family. Everybody needs correction and a cover. Everybody needs to know the fear of God and mercy. Father sent his son from heaven above. His justice was served through the death of love. But love was raised from the dead, and the son is alive. Father and mother work day and night preparing him a bride. Everybody needs a father and a mother. Everybody needs family. Everybody needs correction and a cover. Everybody needs to know the fear of God and mercy. The family is one. The family is one. Now, just because we have imperfect earthly moms and dads does not mean that we don't have a perfect heavenly father and mother. And we read here in Proverbs that she, mother, the mother heart of God, is crying out in the street. She's not hiding. Anyone can come in. Now, according to 1 Corinthians uh, 4, 7, we get nothing from God except that which we what? Receive. You can't be good enough. You can't earn His love. You can't work your way into the family. The only way into the family, the only way into the place of covenant, the place of provision, the place of life, the place of peace, the place of joy, the place of delight, the the, the place of abundant life is in the Father's house, and He welcomes you, but you have to receive the invitation. He's saying to you, you can come into my house, but not with all that sin and selfishness in your life. Now, I know you can't get it out. You're helpless. That's why I came, suffered, bled, and died on a cross that I may cleanse you and declare you before the court of the universe is innocent. It's as if you lived a perfect life. You see what a lie, guilt, regret, and shame is? Guilt going under and living torment. Regret, rejecting grace, receiving torment. Shame, Satan's hellish attack on me. That lie is broken when you see the cross and how much you're loved by this Father, God, Creator, Mother, Son, inviting you to be a part of the family. But you have to receive that spirit of adoption. And you have all of the rights of even the biological child when you are adopted by the Father. A joint heir with Christ. Isn't that amazing? That's why, that's why you get really interested. Go in there and read about the promises. This is not a book, a rule book to tell you what you ought to do. This is a revelation of what he's doing in you if you're receiving. And you know what he dares to tell you? If, now this is one of the rights as a child, an adopted child. This is the invitation to you and me. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Everything will work together for your good. Your leaf will not wither, you'll bear fruit in season, and everything you do will prosper. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Do you realize the people who do not know, who stay out in the front yard, and they will not receive a spirit of adoption, and they they really go through life under the illusion and the deception that you were brought into this earth to be tormented and miserable for 60 years and die, or 50, or 40, or 30, or 20. You were not destined for misery. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And when you surrender in the arms of your father and receive that spirit of adoption and come home, you know what starts happening? You quit striving trying to grab something you've already got. So many people so terrified, so many people cry, so many people so lonely inside, believing a lie. Believing a lie. So many people fighting to grab what they've already got. Perfect love is here. Look to that cross and you will see Jesus loves you. Like it or not. And all you've got to do is receive. 
And as you do, well, I don't feel it. So what? If it weren't deeper than your feelings, it'd be totally fickle and unstable with no integrity. He comes in and moves deeper than a feeling. Sometimes you feel it. Sometimes you don't. What's so what? I'll tell you when you get to know the shepherds, when you walk with him through the valley of the shadow of death. That's when you get to know him. You know why he lets enemies rise up against you, Psalm 23, so he can prepare a table before you in their presence? That's why. That's why you can bless those that curse you. Now, see, this is the walk of wisdom. Uh, as we go on down there and we see the bread, have you seen bread in your Bible before? Have you seen wine in your Bible before? You saw it today in the one-year Bible in Matthew 26 at the, at the Last Supper. When he says, this bread is my body broken for you. This wine is my blood, the symbol of the covenant I'm making with you. I'm giving my life to heal you. And here's what you've got to do. Now, he uses We see in Romans one, he uses created things to reveal his divine attributes. And you can look at every physical created thing going on and you can see a type and a picture of the spirit. When he heals a blind man's eyes so that he can see the physical world. And then he comes and he opens your spirit eyes that you can sing with Newton, the slave trader and the sinful, wretched man who wrote Amazing Grace. I once was blind, but now I see. Amazing Grace that saved a wretch like me. Now I know what the man was writing about. Now I can see Not 2020, I'm looking through a glass darkly, but I can see. So all of these created things are revealing to you his divine attributes. And he said, all right, when you eat bread, what happens? Here's the Eucharist. Do this in remembrance of me. When you eat bread and you chew it up and you swallow it, that bread becomes one with you chemically. And the wine, a picture of the blood. What do you do with it? You receive it. You eat it. He said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Ooh, gross, Jesus. You want us to be cannibals? No, you missed the whole point. I'm giving you a spiritual revelation through a physical reality. When you receive the bread, you and the bread become one. That sounds like 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He said, anybody who joins himself to God becomes one spirit with him. Do you realize the invitation that you have? And everything externally is trying to distract you from life. From simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Oh, accept his acceptance of you. Eat the bread. Drink the wine that he's mixed for you. So in this proverb, you have the commentary in the one-year Bible, which is in, in Matthew 26 today. It's wonderful. Wonderful to see that. Now, wisdom, she is doing all of these things. She's crying out in the street, eat my bread. Jesus is the bread of life. He says, come to him. Now, this is wisdom. (laughs) Wisdom is a person. Man, you're walking with a person. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Now, the way of understanding is not necessarily the path of least resistance. So get that. We think it wasn't wise for you to do that. You know, 10 years ago, Bob, it ain't, I've heard this from many, many well-meaning friends. Bob, it's not wise for you to leave your business and start bringing in a bunch of drug addicts nobody else wants. I know it's not wise. (laughs) You're going to lose everything. You worked so hard for all these years, you're going to lose it all. You better get back and do the business that you got. And you know you can make some money and keep it going, but you can't do the business and, and pick that kid up out of the woods too. Who's trying to kill himself drinking Lysol, burned every bridge. It was not wise in the world's eyes. Total foolishness, but wisdom said, do it. You've got to let the peace of God rule in your heart. And if you've made a choice by your will, 2 Corinthians 5, 9, my only ambition is to please you, Jesus. If it costs me everything, if nobody understands. Now listen, I want to ask you a question. You're going to die anyway, sooner than you think. Why not sell out lock, stock, and barrel to him? It's no fool who gives up what he can't keep, earthly life. 
in exchange for what he can't lose, eternal life. So it's not the path of least resistance. Sometimes it's the path of most resistance and you don't understand it yourself and your emotions are in turmoil. But you just say, I don't care how I feel. I've decided to follow Jesus. Many songs have been written. Many profound words have been spoken about who we are and what we're doing down here. Many a saint has been mistrusted. Many a good man's ended up busted. Many a culprit's been made a hero down through the years. There's been some downright deserving people who found that they just couldn't fit into a complicated joke some call justice that only caters to the hypocrites. I even tried to hide by sticking my head in the sand, but every time I do, I end up exposing my posterior end. <laughs> well, I'm not the kind to be inclined to be a legal, tender, loving man, but it's way past time I stood up and took a stand. Friends, I'm going with Jesus. I'm no longer trusting this world. I'm going with Jesus. I finally stopped to think of what the world offers me. Pain, destruction, strife, depression, death, and disease. I'm no longer trusting the world. I'm going with Jesus. And Jesus said, let go the cares of this world. Let's go to where you were born to be. All you've got to lose are the chains that are binding you. He said, let go. Come on, take up your cross and follow me. I died just so I could set you free. Jesus said, let go. Jesus said, let's go. Jesus said, let go. Jesus said, let's go. And you got to say for you, and I say for me, yes, sir. I'm going with you, Jesus. That's wisdom who's crying out in the street. Not follow the path of least resistance where you think you'll feel good. But deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And then he comes and confirms his word and makes that covenant real to you. I'll tell you what he's looking for. He's not looking for you to sober up. He's not looking for polished, shiny vessels. He's looking for broken vessels, yielded vessels. Vessels surrender to him. And Lord, I've made a mess of it. Here's the gift of desperation. I've made such a mess of it. And if you can do anything, this was my prayer, is my prayer. Lord, I've made such a mess of it. If you can take these broken pieces and do anything with it, it's all yours. And then he says, if I can, bring the boy to me. And you wake up so full of hope, so full of life, so full of joy, so surrounded by opportunity and you know that when you breathe your last your life counted for something not in spite of the past and the brokenness and the pit you dug for yourself but even because of it because you're minus he made a plus at calvary now tell me, what we have we got to complain about? <laughs> Nothing. As my friend Brian says, it's all good. So she's crying out. Seven. He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself. And I tell you, if you can't communicate with somebody, you might as well just keep your mouth shut. If they're going to take everything you say wrong, you're not going to communicate with words. And I tell you, you know what a scoffer uh, the reason a scoffer won't listen to you is because a scoffer thinks correction is rejection. That is such a simple word, but it is a breakthrough, I'm telling you. We think correction is rejection, therefore we don't want to be corrected. And, that, and that's why we curl up and hide in our little lonely corner and won't let anybody get near us. Because we don't want to get rejected again. Because everybody's corrected us, rejected us. Well, you're not a scoffer when you receive correction because you have discovered that correction is not rejection. Correction is love showing you a more excellent way. And he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. A wicked man, we know that wicked is synonymous with unbelief. There's nothing more wicked than calling God a liar. That's a key that's just opened up Proverbs to you. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he'll love you. 
Now we see over and over the contrast between a foolish man and a wise man. A foolish man is one who will not come to the light. And the reason a foolish man will not come to the light is because a foolish man is deceived into thinking that correction is rejection. A wise man is someone who will come to the light. Because a wise man has seen the cross and he realizes that his behavior does not substantiate or validate who he is. God's only begotten Son dying on that cross for you settles the self-esteem issue. Joint heir with Christ. That's who you are. Now you can bow your head and say, I'm so unworthy. You're worthy enough for him to die for you. Let's go with what he thinks is worthy. Not what this world's told you. You're no good. You're worthy. You're unworthy. You're a sinner. You just don't deserve it. You know, and, and right in the middle of the congregation, Psalm 74, they're being destroyed. I'm too unworthy for you to die for me. I'm too unworthy to be forgiven. I've made a mess for it. Let me just go through life rehearsing my, my uh, past behavior and my mistakes and, and all of the hell that I've been through and put other people through. Let me meditate on that a while. Yeah, and just die in it, calling God a liar. He says, not I'm going to forgive you. He said, Father, forgive Bob. He doesn't even know what he's doing. Oh, how true that is. But I've got to look at that cross and I've just got to say, I, I'm, I'm going to follow you. And I tell you, when you're following somebody, you're moving. And you're coming to the light. There's First John again, chapter 1. He says, if we walk in the light as he is the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And that's the wise man who will receive correction because he knows correction is not rejection. Here's something. Uh, we've got uh, three minutes left. And I think uh, I'd like to share this with you. The law of gravity is like the law of sin and death. You don't break the law of gravity. It breaks you. In order for an airplane to fly, it looks like that aircraft is defying the law of gravity. But it's not. There's another law in operation called the law of lift. Romans 8, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. As long as an airplane is moving forward and maintains a certain airspeed, he'll fly. As soon as he starts slowing down, you hear that stall warning. As soon as he starts slowing down, his airspeed drops, the law of gravity is going to be fulfilled in that aircraft and he's going to crash. You've got to keep coming to the light that the law of the spirit of life can keep you from being destroyed by the law of sin and death. Do you see that? You can't walk in light you don't have, and that's why we don't throw stones or get critical about anybody. You've got to come to the light for you. And I tell you, when you hear something right here, when you hear something in this word, and God opens your eyes up to it, and you see the light, you better come to it. You better come to it. You're not going to be judged by the number of sins you commit. You're going to be judged by the light you rejected. He's saying, I do not condemn you. Come to me. It's just like if I've been living in guilt, regret, and shame, calling God a liar and saying, and, uh, and saying that Calvary was not enough for me and, and, and whining in my self-pity party, and I've just heard this word right here through the radio program or sitting right here in this living room, and I just said, my God, I've been doing that. I've been living in guilt, regret, and shame. I didn't know I was calling God a liar and I was wicked, and I've just received correction well, am I going to receive correction? No, and correction is not rejection, but it's God showing me a more excellent way. And if it's called walking with a repentant heart. And this is going on in the secret place of you where no other person can go, man. Only Christ can come and live in that place where your thoughts come from. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow forth the issues of life. You walk with a repentant heart. You stay on your knees in your heart. You got to do it for you. And you come to the light, and when he corrects you, you receive that correction gladly, and you're coming to the light, and you're maintaining your airspeed. And the demons can't touch you. And you're walking in peace that passeth all understanding and joy and express and full of glory because you're coming to the light. Isn't that precious? Lord, we sure do thank you for the law of the spirit of life that sets us free from the law of sin and death. May we continue to come to the light with your help. You're the shepherd. We know you're the only one with the words of life. Lord, we long to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow you and to please you. May we do that this day. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
Thank you for joining us. This is Bob McLeod. If you'd like more information concerning Our Father's Arms, you can write us at Our Father's Arms, Post Office Box 1158, Jacksonville, Alabama 36265. Or visit us on the web at www.ourfathersarms.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ continue to give us eyes to see the unseen. Amen. Love descending deeper than our feelings. And love expanding beyond our minds. Love transcending space and time. Jesus loves you. Do you know?